Oh, all right. Um, again, uh, let me just introduce myself. My name is Alan Abriha. I'm a disability specialist here at Leeward Community College. Um, there's two of us in the office, myself and my colleague, uh, Chris Hernandez, we both work with students with disabilities and provide classroom accommodations. Um, in addition to that, we do have two different types of assistive technologies that we use. Um, there's definitely more than what I'm going to be explaining today, but for, for Leeward and for our office and for the students that we serve here, we use two different types. Uh, we have um, Kurzweil 3000, which is um, what we would call a, a text-to-speech software. Um, it basically takes text and reads it aloud to the student um, who's using it. Um, I do refer to it sometimes as a screen reader, but it's actually a little bit more than that. Um, but sometimes that's the easiest way to describe it. Um, we also use Glean, which is an audio note taker. It helps students take notes while in class. Um, whether the class is live face-to-face -face, or in Zoom, they're able to use it. And both of these technologies are web-based. So the student doesn't need to download anything onto their computer. They just need to create a login. Um, my main focus today is going to be Kurzweil. I will show you how Glean works. Um, I'm hoping I can show you the way I want to show you um, so that you can get an idea how, how it can really help you or if you're a faculty member or instructional faculty, how it could possibly um, help your students as well. Okay. And I do have two screens. I have my presentation playing on one screen and I have Zoom on my screen to my right. So I may be looking towards my screen to my right, but it might look like I'm, I'm not looking at the camera. So that's just so I can kind of see everyone's reactions if, if they have questions. So um, we're going to start with Kurtzwell 3000. And I was, when I was asked to do this training, um, I realized the training I do for my students takes less than five minutes because I just show them basically how to open up the software, how to upload a document, and then how to get it read to them. And it and it's um it wasn't enough to really do a whole set of slide decks on. So I figured out the best way to do it was to just get a video uh, straight from the Kurzweil um, collection. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to show you that video. And then afterwards, I'll actually go into our version of Kurzweil and show you how the interface looks like and also let you know how you can, um, whether you're a student or instructional faculty or faculty member or staff here at Leeward Community College, um, I'll, I'll show all of you how to gain access to it because we, um, another thing good about this software is it's now um, available to everyone, not just with, not just for students with disabilities. That's something new that we're, we're um, really happy to have this year. It's just it wasn't always like that. And I'll explain how that happened as well. All right. So if there's no further questions, I'm going to play the video. And then once it's done, I'll go into the demo. Um, and then we can do a quick Q&A if, if, if everyone has any questions as well. All right. At Kurzweil, we believe that education should have no boundaries and no barriers. Kurzweil is literacy support software. The original digital document reader was developed by Ray Kurzweil back in the 70s, and this develops on that technology. It provides support in reading, studying, writing, and testing the entire learning process. It works for beginners to advanced students and professionals. How does it do it? We have three modes of the software, a web browser, Kurzweil3000.com, and a desktop client that is the first version of the software and has all the bells and whistles. Here we are on Canvas looking at the Read the Web Browser extension. One of the unique things of Kurzweil is that not only do we have a reader, but we have it in 13 languages with multiple accents and voices. You can speed it up and slow it down to meet your reading speed or the type of material you're studying. Also, you can adjust what is highlighted and the reading method. Does it read till you tell it to stop? Or does it read one unit and pause to let you take notes? So here we are in Canvas. Let's click into an assignment. Here, we're going to take the most basic tool and listen for a moment. 
as a group project during the 1997. In addition to listening, we have a dictionary. A unique thing about Kurzweil is not only do we allow translation of individual words, but you can actually translate entire segments of speech, making sure that you have it in context. Quite often, we'll run across things that are picture-based, and so we can't read them based on the text, but we click on the screenshot reader, it captures the image, pulls the text out of it, drops it into Kurzweil 3000, so we can read it and we have a good number of tools that we can use with it. Let's go back to our reading assignment for a minute though. The next thing is the ability to read a PDF. Here, my highlighter tool turns into a PDF reader. I click on it, it grabs the entire PDF and loads it into Kurzweil3000.com. We are going to run into situations where we want to take notes. So I'm going to show the notes I've already taken. Here I highlighted main idea, secondary idea, and some details, which is great. If I'm coming back to this website, I can review what I've highlighted, not have to read the whole website. I can click the extract button here. I've extracted the column notes. You can see they're organized main ideas, supporting ideas, and details. The next thing we want to look at here is in the Kurzweil 3000 website. Here I have an image document loaded and that gives me the ability to do quite a few cool things. Here I've added a sticky note for instructions. I also have text notes that I would use more to answer questions. I can do a voice note. This is an example of a voice note. And there's a really cool one called a bubble note that I click on. Maui was a demigod who helped create the Polynesian world. True. False. I can do all sorts of advanced note taking with bubble notes. It's a really great way to get involved with the text and make sure I'm understanding it. I also have the ability to jump to a specific Page location five. in the text using bookmarks. Now the other thing that's super helpful with Kurzweil is that if I'm in a PDF, I have the ability to make sure it's doing what I want. So you can see the computer here went read the title first and then this paragraph and then this paragraph is five. So here I'm in my zone editor. Let's see why it's five. Oh, I come down here. Oh, look, it has some stuff on the bottom. I'm going to click on this and change it to three. And then I would just click save. So I can do all sorts of changes to make sure it's reading in the order I want. Now let's jump back to our extracted notes. Here they are in a column note format, which I can use to study. I can hide columns and things like that. But very importantly, I can also extract them into an editable outline. Here I've got them extracted. And one of the unique features is if I don't really like outlines, I'm more of a visual person, I can change it to a brainstorm. Once I have my outline or my brainstorm ready to start writing, I can come into split screen. Here I have my outline on the left, so I stay organized. My writing is on the right. And I can even dictate my paper instead of having to type it. I can then listen to what I've written or dictated to make sure it's what I want. All of this, of course, is customizable. So once I'm done writing, I can come over here to the draft view and I can make sure my formatting is everything as I want it. Then I can download it as a Word document or a PDF so I can turn it in. I can just go ahead and print right here from within Kurzweil so that I can turn in a hard copy. Kurzweil, as I mentioned, is highly customizable. For people with visual sensitivities, we have a dark mode. You can change background color and more and more and more. I can save it back to the Universal Library, which is the Kurzweil Online Cloud Library. Google Drive, OneDrive. Over here, we have spell check and word prediction. So that's two of the formats. Let's look at the third, and that is the installed version of the software. As I mentioned, this is the one with all the bells and whistles. I have a text document open here, so I have a lot of the tools I've already seen. Plus, you can see there's several more. In addition, I can create an audio file. I can do all sorts of important things with scanning, proofreading, setting up the 
book to read the way I want it. Here under Tools, I can create a bibliography. And under Options, I also can customize and customize and customize to make sure that it fits the needs of individuals. So, so what makes Kurzweil, aside from being so comprehensive, what makes it unique? In addition to all those tools that you saw, Kurzweil has a few other things that set us apart. It's highly customizable. You saw in the install version, all those buttons and tabs, I can hide those. I can hide the tools I don't want. I can add tools. Also, because we pull items into the Kurzweil environment, we don't sit on top of other software. We are inherently more stable. We also provide excellent support. Account managers are here to help you get set up, to help you learn the new tools and features. We have a lot of how-to videos, both on YouTube and in the Kurzweil Academy on our main website, kurzweiledu.com. Also, any user has access to technical support. PDF handling is excellent in Kurzweil. As you saw with the zone editing, you can go into the details of the PDF, make sure it's reading the way you want it to. We have many people tell us our web browser is the best, and that is because it works so well in so many different formats, in Canvas, in other LMSs, on websites, pulling in the PDFs. It really makes your online study super simple. So what does all this sum up to? Kurzweil is extremely comprehensive and extremely customizable. We invite you to experience a world of learning where there are no boundaries and there are no barriers. I'd also like everyone to know that I am going to begin with this brief slideshow, but then I'll transition right into the software to demonstrate the feature. Okay, so that was a brief overview of the software. Um, when when the when the training is done today, um, I'll go ahead and share the link to that video. It's it's just a YouTube video that anyone has access to, but um, rather to help you from you know rather than have you go into YouTube and try to search up the specific video, I'll go ahead and share the link with everyone who's attended today, so you can watch it again, um, just to get an overview of what what the software does. Um, we the we do have access to several copies of the um, installed version, which is something you can install on your computer. Mm -hmm. But in that sense, we only have limited copies of those. So I think we have one here, uh, two here in our office for myself and my colleague. There might be one installed in the writing center, if I'm not mistaken. But in terms of the web version, um, we do have unlimited licenses for that. So that's the one that um, if you're a student, whether you have a disability or not, or if you're instructional faculty, um, counseling faculty, or staff, um, I'll be able to give you a license for those um, for those of you who need one to access the, um, the web version of it. Um, you just have to email me and then I can set you up with an account. It did talk about the different LMSs um, that it's compatible with. Um, some of you may or may not be familiar with this, but currently the UH system uses Laulima, and we are going to transition to a new learning environment. Um, I'm not sure yet what that's going to be, what LMS that's going to be. I have heard some buzz about that it might possibly be Canvas or something else. Um, I've used Canvas at another university that I used to work for um, compared to Lao Lima and Canvas for me. I, I don't really have a preference. Um, I don't really see one being more you know, where one over the other is more superior, but I, I have heard from other um, mm -hmm. of my colleagues that they, they do like Canvas um, more for its accessibility purposes, which also should be good for our office since we're always um, dealing with um, accessibility issues for students. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into just um, my version of doing a demo. But before I do that, um, does anyone have any questions so far? I don't see any hands up and nothing in the chat. So I'm going to go ahead and show you, um, share my screen with you again. So, All right. Can everyone see? Um, I'm currently on the login page for Kurzweil. So if you can see that, anybody, just give me a hand. Uh, 
thumbs up or let me know. All right. Thank you. Thank you. How do you say it? Is that Soleil? Am I saying that correctly? Awesome. All right. Thank you, Soleil. All right. So this is our um our web-based access for Kurzweil 3000. So if you were to request access from me and I provide it for you, this is where you would go to log in. So it's basically just Kurzweil3000.com. Um, and then you would have your own username and your own password and something in the chat. Okay, awesome. Thank you for um, confirming that we do have a desktop version in the Writing Center. Yeah, so we purchased, I think, three or four of those. We have one at the Waianae camp, uh, Waianae Moku campus as well. But um, like I said, even if you don't, we don't have, we can't install it on every computer. We do have access, multiple license access to the um, online version. So again, um, continuing from where I left off, um, I can create, you can create, I can give you an account and you can create your own access to, to the web version, but we do have a, a central account that we log into as administrator. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you do log in. Oops. All right, so so when you log in, um, whether you're admin or, or a, you know, someone with a, a student account, or this faculty account. Generally, this is what your interface is gonna look like. It's not gonna have all these, um, like we have our own, I'm logged in as admin. So obviously there's the Leeward, um, the Leeward admin folders, administrator folders, um, but you should have the classic literature, help files and all this other stuff that you see. So once you log into your account, um, it'll kind of look like this um, and it'll change because once you start uploading your own documents, you can create your own folders and have and organize your, your documents that way. So if you look right up here where it says Google Drive, OneDrive, Bookshare, or Computer, um, these are the areas you can go to to upload documents. So if you have a textbook that you need to upload, um, maybe you're taking a Laulima class that has an online text already available, you can actually download that version into a PDF and then upload the PDF into into um into Kurzweil and then just have it read it for you. Uh, my experience in the past has been if especially if you have a a large volume uh, textbook like 300 pages, 400 pages, I wouldn't recommend uploading all of that at one time because what will happen sometimes is depending how strong your computer is, how much computing power you have, it may stall or crash your computer. So I always tell students just I know if you're if you're doing chapter one for this week, just go ahead and upload chapter one, which is probably going to be only maybe 15, 30 pages, maybe at the most. Um, try not to upload the whole entire textbook. But um, but yeah, you would just click on these and then it would show you, like if I go to my computer for me, um, it'll just it would just show me some files, right? Um, and I can I can go from here as far as um what files I want to upload or open up. And then if you go to your Google Drive, it'll take you to your Google, um, basically your your Google Drive folder where you'll have access to, to certain things and then upload it from there as well. Um, Bookshare, I think is a network that you might have to sign up for um, where um, you know college, a uh, higher ed faculty might, might share some of their um, OER texts and things like that where you can have access to. But basically, yes, yeah, so once you log in, it'll look this way. So, um, you have their universal library, my account, and then I'm just gonna open up um, classic literature here and open up uh, software. This is what I usually use to demo. Just close on that if you have that message. So this is um, when you open up a document, it'll open it up uh, this way. The um, the person doing the demo earlier on the video I showed says you can go into dark mode and just do that. If, if lighting is an issue for you, you can toggle between dark mode and regular mode. And then right up here where you see this looks like a little gear with the speaker, that's where the master menu is where you can kind of change the voice. You can go from a, a, a female voice in English or you can go from a male voice in English. And then again, there's different um, translations Australian, Spanish, um, 
all kinds of um, different languages and accents as well that you can do. And then you can um, make changes to the reading speed. Uh, it's usually default to normal. You can go one times faster, two times faster, three times faster, depending. Um, it, it can sound kind of robotic. That's why they have the ability to change the reading speed. And it really comes down to your preference as a user. And as, as they um, demoed in the video, you can have it read a word at a time, do sentence at a time or a paragraph. It's usually set to sentence. And then you can do continuous, self-paced or word by word. Um, it really just comes down to you as far as what your um, what your um, preference is, right? And they showed a lot of features in that video that I myself am not familiar with just because a lot of our users that come into our office really just use this as a screen reader. So once you get signed up with an account, um, you know, feel free to try and explore all those um, different features that might work for you. And that's why I'm going to send you the link to the, the, the video as well. So you can always go back and reference to it. So we can just um, see how this would read out. So up here you have the play button or fast forward, rewind, and then the speaker for the, um, if you want it muted. So I'm just gonna click on play here. Flatland by Edwin A. Habit, 1884. Two, the inhabitants of space in general, and HC in particular. This work is dedicated by a humble native of Flatland in the hope that even as he was initiated into the mysteries of three dimensions, having been previously conversant with only two, Okay. Did everyone hear that? Everyone able to hear the demo? Good. Yeah, so that's how it'll read um, at, if you have it at normal speed. So if we went even just one, one speed faster here and I change the pace, this is how it'll sound. Flatland by Edwin A. Habit, 1884. Two, the inhabitants of space in general, and HC in particular. This work is dedicated by a humble native of Flatland in the hope that, even as he was initiated into the mysteries of three dimensions, having been previously conversant with only two. So that's a little bit faster um, for some people that might work and some people that might be, even though it's one times faster than no, the normal speed, that might be a little too, too fast already. But those are some of the things you can change. Um, I'm just going to go with a different voice this time. Um, see if that that makes a difference for some of you. Um, so I changed it from a male to a um, female voice. Flatland by Edwin A. Abbott, 1884. Two, the inhabitants of space in general, and HC in particular. This work is dedicated by a humble native of Flatland, in the hope that even as he was initiated into the mysteries of three dimensions, having been previously conversant with only two. So the citizen. So that's also on the one times faster with a different voice, so that you can tell there's some differences in the nuances there. If I bring it back to normal, and just pick up where we left off. By a humble native of Flatland, in the hope that, even as he was initiated into the mysteries of three dimensions, having been previously conversant with only two, so the citizens of that celestial region may aspire yet higher and higher to the secrets of four, five, or even six dimensions. So you can see the differences. You know, people might have different comfort levels with the different type of voices and the different, again, like the cadence might make a difference to you in, in the way you learn. So that's pretty much the basics of the software. That, that's most of our students use it just for that. It was the screen reading option um, as I, showed you earlier with the with the video there's a lot of other options you could do you can even even though this isn't a note taker you could do some note taking with this set up like your own flashcards and that's really when you get into the advanced usage of it so when we first got Kurzweil we had um I think only like I want to say when I first started here we had probably five licenses so what that would mean out of our entire student population we would only be able to give out five licenses, right? Which this was back, I started here in 2017. Um, 
And believe it or not, at that time, that five licenses was actually more than enough because we hardly had any students requesting use of the software. Um, but we did some marketing. We put up some posters and did some mail outs and talked about it more during our sessions when we met with our students. Um, and the usage began to grow and grow. We went from five to 10 licenses and then went from 10 to 20. And then just recently this year, I found out um, 20 licenses, if we were to go beyond that, we would go into this other tier where we could pay the same price for, we could go ahead and pay for those licenses, or we could pay the same price and get basically what's called an institutional uh, access account. So we went with that instead. So what this does now for Leeward, at least, is um, basically gives us unlimited licenses. So if you are a student, it's definitely... Again, um, you know, our purpose here in the Disability Services Office is to work with our students who self-identify with a disability and need this type of uh, resource. So um, definitely they'll have access to this. But even if you're if you're a student who doesn't have a disability or not officially diagnosed with one, and you're looking at this now thinking, wow, this this would help me in my own studying, um, feel free to send me an email and I will provide you with a license. Um, you don't have to go through our intake process and, and tell us you have a disability or anything like that. Um, just let, let me know that you, you want to use it. You went, Hey, I went to the training the other day and this is really cool. Um, I heard I can have, I can have access to it and just say that and, and I'll set you up with an account and then we can do like a quick demo again, just to kind of get you started. Um, if you are instructional faculty at Leeward or you are a, a counselor or staff member and you want to use this, or maybe you're here, and you're you're from a particular division, and not everyone could attend, you know, because you're teaching. We're all busy throughout the day. If you're you're a member of any faculty or division, and you see this, and you're like, wow, my colleagues could really use this. Um, feel free to spread the word. The more people we have using this, I think, the better. Um, kind of helps us justify the the cost also of of purchasing an institutional license. So so again, this is available to anyone who's interested um, at this point. So um, I welcome any you know um, emails that are going to come through after this. Just let me know, and I'll. And it takes about like I said, less than five minutes to set up your account. And it is the good thing is it's web based, so you don't have to worry about having to download anything onto your computer, um, or anything like that. You just log onto a website and 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 you'd be good to go. So, someone put in a question here. Okay, awesome. All right. So that is the Kurtzwell 3000 um, text-to-speech reader, uh, text-to-speech software. So um, before I show you the audio note taker, um, are there any questions on Kurtzwell? Anybody? And feel free to email me afterwards too. I understand some people might be shy and not feel comfortable asking during the session, but um, or you might not have a question now and then later something comes up. Right, like oh, I should have asked this. So feel free to email me um, afterwards, and I can um, definitely answer your question. So I'm gonna just stop sharing just for a minute, so I can transition to the the Glean audio note taker. Wait, I can't hear me. No. Oh. Yes, Owen. My name. Oh, no, no, no. I just yep, was yep, wondering. No, 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 no. I just was wondering. I was talking too much. I don't know if you can see me, but okay. I can see you. Okay, okay. No, because my. I got it I got in late. I tried to get on, but it took me like 15 minutes because oh, my okay. internet for some reason went out. Okay, well, I think we, we have this recorded. So we can share it later on for those of you who missed it. Okay. okay. All right. So now I'm going to show you our Glean audio note taker. Um, can everyone, again, anyone give somebody, give me a thumbs up. They can see the Glean interface. All right. Thanks, Sole. Thanks, um, Sensei, Kazuko. Um, so this is something I've already recorded, um, but in this Glean software, um, what it does, it is an audio note taker. So right over here, you see this little kind of pink circle, I like to call it. If you click on this, it'll show you the different recording options. So for students who are taking a live face-to-face -face class, you would always just click on the microphone option 
to record. If you are doing um, an online class like Zoom, um, distance learning, whether it's asynchronous or synchronous, that's when you would use the screen audio um, option. That way it'll record whatever's you know playing on your screen. And when I say record, it, it won't record the video, but it'll record the um, the the verbal things that are being said, right? So if you're watching a, a lecture video, whatever the instructor is saying in that in that time is going to get recorded, right? So so that's the recording options. Um, this is a meeting for our some of you who work for Leeward are familiar with this. We have to do an ARPD every year. Um, some of you students are like, "What is that?" Okay, but um. I chose this because there's nothing in here that is going to reveal any information that not everyone's privy to. So I'm just going to show you how it works. Like I said, this is already something that's pre-recorded. So um, when you record something in in class or through Zoom, um, you're going to see these little um, these lines. You see the thick lines, and then it goes thin. So the thick lines that you kind of see are are the areas where it's recording a speech. And then if, if the, the speaker pauses, whether it's for a short time or a long time, you'll get this kind of thin line right here that shows that there's no recording at that time. But I'm just going to play something really quick. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to go to class, record the lecture, and then later on, once it's done, you can give it a file name so you know which class it's for. Um, if it's for English 100, you can put English 100 and then the date of the recording. And then once that's done, you open it up just like any other Thank file. You. And then you would just click on play. And um, let me just make sure I'm, I'm sharing my sound here. Okay. Yeah, just click on play and it'll play back um, the entire lecture. Right. Can you guys hear that? Or is it kind of hard? Kind of hard. Let me, yeah. So I'm gonna try one. Yeah, so that's that's how it work. It would it would um it would play back. But the good thing about this software is after you record the audio, you can click on transcribe and then it'll take the audio recording and actually transcribe it into several pages of notes. So if you click on transcript, in addition to the audio, it'll give you text of what's been recorded. So this is actually a new feature for the software. In the past, they would only do audio recordings and you would have to get um, a third party. You, you as a student would have to buy another software to do the transcription for you. But now it's built into the software and you can just transcribe and you can kind of cut and paste this into a document and really arrange it so that it works for you. If there's things in there that you feel like, I don't need to remember this, or I don't need to remember what, what my instructor ate for dinner over the weekend, you know, because sometimes they go off on a tangent and start talking about stuff, right? That's not related to class. You can highlight that, delete it, and just have the things that you really need to remember. So it's a really good tool for, for note-taking. Um, let me see if I can show you a demo. Yeah, so when you first go in, like just like the Kurzweil, your, your list will probably be very limited. You might not have anything there. Um, but as you build, as you record things along the way and you save files, your, your list will just get longer and longer. So anytime you want to record something new, you would click on new event. And yeah. then like I said, it'll be blank yeah. for now. Oh, So there is a question in the chat. I'm, I'm going to address that afterwards. Um, so for Glean, um, this is basically what it would look like. Um, and then you would click on, again, um, microphone or screen audio or screen audio and mic. So I'm just going to go screen. Um, I'm going to see microphone for now since I'm the one talking. So we just click on record. And as I'm speaking, you can see that it's recording what I'm saying right now to you folks. And because I'm not pausing, it's gonna continue to record. Um, so now that I pause, it's gonna give you the breaks in the recording. And what's good about this is while it's recording, 
um, you, as a student or as a user, you can just add, you can also type along the way, right? You can take notes at your own pace while it's capturing all the other content for you. So you can kind of type as you can and then later on match up your what you typed up with what was recorded and then um and then let's say class is done for the day um you know you can give it a file name and a, and a date and then you click on stop and then it's done recording and then you don't have um when you're going to do transcribe audio I always tell students don't do that immediately after class because if you have like an hour worth of lecture, it's gonna take a few minutes to um to watch my call it to, to do the transcription. Um, but I'm gonna show you now what you do is you just click transcribe audio. And just wait a few minutes and it'll um it'll give you it'll basically give you a text version of um of the audio recording. Right there, so you'll have audio, and then you can do the playback. And as I'm speaking, you can see that it's recording what I'm saying right now to you folks, and because I'm not pausing, it's gonna continue to record. Um, so now that I pause, it's gonna give you the breaks in the recording. And what's good about this is while it's recording, um, you, as a student or as a user, you can just add, you can also type along the way, right? So that's how it just works as far as the playback. And then when you click on transcript, um, it just, just transcribes everything. So this one, the difference between this and the, the uh, Kurzweil is this one, we do have limited licenses. So we're not able to give it out to everyone. So we really um, do a lot of vetting on who qualifies for the note taker and who doesn't. So it's not just a matter of, you know, I just don't want to take notes. So can I get a note taker to do it for me? Um, so that is basically, um, those are the two technologies that we use. Um, someone did have some concerns about um, intellectual um, property issues and things like that. Um, we've been using this software for like since I've been here 2017. And I do have to say um, in terms of ADA accommodations, our students just, just strictly for the ones who are requesting no taking assistance, um, we do not require them to ask permission for recording. If this is an accommodation they have, um, this is something that needs to be um, allowed to be done. And we've never had any really anyone question that actually. Um, Hawaii is also a one party state which means if you and I are in a conversation, I can actually record without your permission, right? Um, I do understand there are certain, you know, because if you look at it, if, if you're lecturing in class, you're giving that information out to the students in class. If they didn't have the recorder, they would be trying to write down everything you're saying anyway. So they would still capture whatever it is that you're saying in that class. And you would have no control what they were writing down or not, unless you would check everyone's notes afterwards, right? Um, the only thing that we do not allow, students sometimes will come and say, can I video record my professor while they're talking? Because in addition to having notes, sometimes I need to see where they're at in the lecture. So I know when I re-listen to it, I know where what to study. So something like that, we would definitely ask the professor first, like, are you comfortable with the student recording you? Um, and in that sense, we do get a lot more pushback. So it's not something we allow very often. It would have to be really, um, um, you know, everything we do has to deal with access, right? Not, not necessarily success. That's the way that ADA works is we just want to break down barriers and give you access to your, your course content, your education, so you can participate. And that success is going to come more on you and how well you learn, how well you, you, uh, you, you use the resources around you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's basically how, how Glean works. Um, We've also um, had students request like slides. So we, we we have that accommodation as well, where we'll ask professors if they can share their slide decks with students, um, as long as it's something that they share with everyone in the class. Right? Um, let's see here. So that's pretty much for today's training. Um, like I said, the, the Glean 
Um, it's limited to students only with, with disabilities and are registered for office. The Kurzweil is open to, to everyone who wants access to it. So if after this, you, you, you know, you watch the demo and if they're like, I'd like to try and play around with that or use it, just let me know. And I'll definitely give you um, access. Um, and if you do have other concerns, like some of the things that came up today, feel free to email me as well. And we can, you know, we can kind of discuss those concerns also. Um, but for now, um, that's all I have. And if there's any questions to everything, anything we covered, um, feel free to, you know, write, bring them up right now. Be happy to answer, answer it the best that I can.